Numb fingers got you feeling like you're typing with mittens on? It might be carpal tunnel syndrome. This video is going to be all about exploring solutions to set your nerves free so you can get that typing speed back up. Hello everyone. Have you ever woken up to tingly fingers or felt a dull ache in your wrist after a long day of typing or gaming? If so, you might be experiencing carpal tunnel syndrome, a surprisingly common condition that affects millions of people worldwide. Don't panic though. Today, we're on a mission to demystify carpal tunnel syndrome. We'll explore what it is, what causes it, and most importantly, how to manage it effectively. Whether you're a seasoned computer user or just someone who enjoys using their hands, this video has something for you. Early diagnosis is the key in the treatment of carpal tunnel syndrome. So watch this video till the end to find out the warning signs that majority of people ignore until it's too late. All right. Let's ditch the medical dictionary and talk about carpal tunnel in a way that doesn't involve putting you to sleep. Imagine a tiny highway called the median nerve running through a narrow tunnel in your wrist. This tunnel is like a crowded subway car at rush hour, and sometimes the poor median nerve gets squished. That's carpal tunnel syndrome in a nutshell. Women seem to be more prone to this tunnel congestion than men. It usually flares up between the ages of 40 and 60, but anyone can get the blues. And while it's more common in folks with Caucasian backgrounds, trust me, no wrist is immune. Now, the technical term is compression, but think of it as the nerve getting squeezed like a toothpaste tube that's seen better days. So that's carpal tunnel syndrome, basically a fancy way of saying your median nerve is getting squeezed, causing tingling, numbness, and sometimes even pain. So the big question remains, why the squeeze? Let's look at the sign stuff behind the curtains. Well. It happens either because the bones get bigger, think remodeling in a tiny apartment, or because the soft tissues puffs up, like packing too much into a suitcase. This squishes the median nerve, leading to all sorts of funky sensations. And speaking of sensations, let's take a peek at this handy map. See the blue area on the hand? That's where the median nerve controls feeling. So if it gets pinched, expect tingling, numbness, or even weakness in your thumb, forefinger, middle finger, and half the ring finger, the side closest to your middle finger. Basically, you're looking at a compression that messes the nerve's ability to do its job, which is why you might feel tingling, numbness, and pain. Now, let's talk about the risk factors for getting carpal tunnel syndrome, and then we'll unravel those telltale signs and symptoms. First up on our list is the family history factor. Yep, carpal tunnel syndrome is like a genetic lottery ticket. If you've got a family member who's dealt with carpal tunnel syndrome before, especially if it's your parent, well, you might just be in line to join the risk club yourself. It's like inheriting your family's love for late night snacks. As it turns out, repetitive hand motions are also major risk factors for CDS. Keyboard warriors, gamers, or even folks who clean for hours. All that movement can put extra pressure on the media nerve, leading to the tingles and numbness we know and not so love. Body composition can also play a role here. More tissues around the nerve means more potential for squishing. And let's not forget conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, which can increase your chances of developing this syndrome. Oh, and uh, guess what? Pregnancy also gets a nod as a risk factor. Yep, it's like adding another layer to the wrist mystery, explaining why females might be more prone to carpal tunnel syndrome. And remember the tissue growth we mentioned earlier? Well, some conditions take that a bit too far like acromegaly. In this condition, your body decides to supersize certain areas, including your hands and wrists. This extra bulk can push on the median nerve, leading to carpal tunnel. Speaking of risk factors, when your thyroid is under the weather, aka hyperthyroidism, it can cause swelling to your extremities, including your hands. This puffiness can also lead to nerve compression, making carpal tunnel a potential guest. And for our final act, we have scleroderma. This condition involves collagen buildup, which can also squeeze the median nerve and cause those familiar tingles and numbness. All right, let's dive into the clinical side of things, shall we? It's all about what's happening in the wrist, hands, and fingers, so pay close attention. As we explained, in carpal tunnel syndrome, patients often experience a trio of sensations, pain, numbness, and tingling. This condition is more specifically known as paresthesia. These sensations like to hang out in the median nerve's favorite spots, the palm, the thumb, the forefinger, the middle finger, and half of the ring finger. Yeah, it's like they've got reserved seating in your hand. Front row, center stage. And guess what? 
the fingers feel the most of that pesky pain, numbness, and tingling sensations. Now, here's the plot twist. The other half of the ring finger gets to skip the shenanigans. So, if you were to actually touch this area, that half of the ring finger closest to the middle finger, there is going to be numbness. But if you touch the other half, it could be normal. Because that part of the hand is supplied by the ulnar nerve. Speaking of quirks, some folks might notice their fingers going hot and cold. Plus, hand and finger weakness can also make matters worse. CDS is also accompanied by muscle atrophy. One area that can feel the effects of this atrophy is called the theater eminence, the fleshy part of your thumb. Yep, it's that squishy bit that helps you grip things. In carpal tunnel syndrome, this area can start to shrink. So, when the muscle mass and the theater eminence decreases or wastes away, we call it theater eminence atrophy. It's another thing we often spot in some patients dealing with carpal tunnel syndrome. Now that we've got a good grip on the clinical features of carpal tunnel syndrome, let's delve into how clinicians diagnose and treat this condition. Well, they often rely on good old-fashioned clinical diagnosis. Remember those telltale signs and symptoms we chatted about earlier? The numbness, tingling, and sensation shenanigans in your thumb, pointer finger, middle finger, and half of your ring finger? Yes, those are like the breadcrumbs leading clinicians to suspect carpal tunnel syndrome. But they don't stop there. Here are three widely popular tests that clinicians use for proper diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome. First, the carpal compression test is the most basic diagnostic test. This test is like a little wrist squeeze-a-thon. The clinician gently presses on the area where the median nerve hangs out, and if this triggers the same numbness, tingling, and pain you've been dealing with, bingo, that's a positive carpal compression test. Secondly, there is the Tinel test. It's like a wrist drum solo, but with a twist. The clinician taps on the nerve pathway, and if it sets off your sensation symphony in the thumb, pointer finger, middle finger, and half of your ring finger, that's another clue in the carpal tunnel mystery. Lastly, clinicians also rely on the fail and sign, also known as the inverted prayer. It's like a little wrist yoga session. You clasp your hands together and squeeze, essentially giving the median nerve a gentle hug. If this reproduces your symptoms within 60 seconds, it's your wrist whispering, yes doc, I'm hurt, a positive fail and sign. Now, if you're curious to learn more about these clinical tests, dive into my lesson on how to master them. But we're not done yet. For the gold standard diagnosis, clinicians might whip out nerve conduction studies. It's like peeking under the hood to see how well your median nerve is firing. It's the official stamp of approval in the carpal tunnel syndrome investigation. So there you have it, a deep dive into the world of carpal tunnel syndrome diagnosis. And now, the section your hurtful wrists have been waiting for. Let's unpack how carpal tunnel syndrome is treated. First up on the list, weight loss. Turns out, carrying extra pounds can put some serious pressure on that median nerve. So, shedding some weight can make a world of difference. And hey, if you need an excuse to start hitting the gym, your wrists will thank you for it. Now, let's talk about the power of ice. Yup, good old fashioned ice packs can work wonders for soothing those achy wrists. Just slap some ice on the area and voila, instant relief. It's like giving your wrists a cool, refreshing hug. Oh, and don't underestimate the importance of rest. Remember those repetitive, hard actions we chatted about earlier? Well, they're like adding fuel to the wrist fire. So, taking a break from those activities can give your wrist some time to recover. But there are some more approaches. Have you ever heard of a night splint? It's like a superhero cape for your wrist. You can slip it on before hitting the hay, and it helps keep your wrist in a comfy, neutral position while you sleep. Now, let's talk about long-term relief ergonomics. Yep, it's all about setting up your workspace in a way that's friendly to your wrists. We're talking about ergonomic keyboards, mice, and wrist rests. This equipment might be pricier than conventional keyboards and mice, but it's a one-time investment for healthier and painless wrists. And for those who need a bit more firepower, there is always the surgical route. The carpal tunnel release. This equipment gives your median nerve some breathing room by releasing the compression. It's a game changer for folks dealing with chronic carpal tunnel syndrome. So, there you have it, the lowdown on treating carpal tunnel syndrome. I hope you found this lesson as helpful as a good wrist massage. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more informative content. And as always, thanks a bunch for tuning in. Until next time, take care of those wrists and keep on typing. 
By the way, what is your average typing speed? Make sure to leave a comment. I open the comment with highest words per minute, and there are some additional topics you may be interested in on our channel.